had the chance to read my paper titled The Numinous and the Fall of Berlin Wall. Well, the central idea is that something numinous happened in parallel to what the demonstration the protesters were doing in the street. I claim that the night of uh, the fall of the Berlin Wall, in a press conference, Herr Schabowski, who was a very experienced politician, went in a sort of trance, where I claim the numinous happened. Mm -hmm. And he said a word when asked, by journalists, when is the new visa regulation going to happen, he said immediately. We could argue that immediately in German means different things, not just from now now, but in the next few days. But I claim that in that moment, the experienced politician, the trained politician, the trained spoke person, had lost track of time, place, and the collective unconscious, the energy of the collective unconscious, somehow took him and made me and made him do this mistake. Hmm? You said he was like in a trance, and I think this expression is okay. Is exactly he was not in his consciousness, but the unconscious took over. Yeah. I can tell you a story, um, another story which I uh, experienced. A man came to the uh, institute and said, are we uh, interested in parapsychological things? So I thought, well, perhaps it is again such a pretender uh, there are a lot of these people, and then uh, I sa he said, no, I can show you a film. So I thought, well, when he has a film, this is interesting. So he showed us the film. He went with his brother to Ceylon to uh, um, and, and, and they wanted to see something uh, parapsychological. And they took a taxi and asked, do you know somewhere and so on? And then the taxi said, yeah, I know. And drove him to a family. <clears throat> and in this family, the older brother usually went into trance but uh, he had done something wrong, uh, so the younger brother took over, and uh, they usually wa go into trance. Uh, they prepare for it, and uh, this is also a, it is a religious atmosphere, and it's a religious ceremony, not just <laughs> Because at one time in Zurich, there were people showing parapsychological facts to show on the stage how wonderful and look at it. So, not of this. This is the wrong attitude. And this younger brother, they made a drum and music and so on went finally into dance, he danced and so on, and one could see now he's in trance. And he said, you can ask questions. So they had an envelope with a question in it and gave him the envelope. And he took it, put it in, in his uh, shirt, and danced and said, you asked where is, and now this is strange, um, these brothers were digging quartz crystals in the mountains and they used to have a drill to go into the stones to find the crystals. So his question was, 
Our drill is stolen. Where is the drill? The man in the trance, he uh, reproduced the question of the envelope which was not open, just put into his shirt and said, on the Grimsel Pass. Now, how can he know, probably he doesn't know, where Grimsel Pass is? Has never heard of Grimsel Pass in Sri Lanka, as it is called now. One doesn't hear of. And then he asked him, but where are the Grimsel Pass? Then he said, behind the rock, but it is destroyed. So therefore, it's not worthwhile to search this drill when it is kaput. But how could he know? I, he d has no knowledge of Grinselbach, no knowledge of Swiss, uh, nothing. And he didn't know that they were drilling for crystals to find. So this is a parapsychological precognition in a way. And in trance, trance is important because it's a connection to the unconscious, to the deeper unconscious. And Jung, by the end of his life, was thinking a lot about these things. And I think it is not published, but in the letters of Jung. Uh, in the later letters, he uh, says, uh, makes a, a, a theory, uh, uh, it could be like that, of the unus mundus. When you are deep in the unconscious, you are in the unus mundus, namely where Space and time are elastic, he says, elastic, namely that tomorrow is also the past and yesterday is also tomorrow and distances are not, uh, distances far is not far, is near to so, in the Unus Mundus, probably we get a lot of information from this in, uh, Unus Mundus from far away in our three-dimensional system, in the, our conscious system. It's three-dimensional, far away. In the Unus Mundus, far away is just here. And we get a lot of information, but so much that our brain is blocking and letting through only important uh, information. Because it would be too much. We would be bombed by information and we could, never could concentrate on something. Or if all this would be coming in. And so we needed this uh, defense of information. But sometimes some information nevertheless comes through from the Unus Mundus. And this would be uh, these intuitions. In the case of Shabowski. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the other case which I wanted to tell you uh, is 
this is the strange situation uh, in the beginning of World War II of Dunkirk. Because a British expedition uh, troop was encircled by the Germans in Dunkirk and they couldn't escape. And then the uh, order came from high up uh, of the German, don't attack. Now, why? The, uh, historians are riddling why, who gave this order. This was strange. They could have killed the whole expedition course. They couldn't escape. They couldn't go back to England uh, because there was no way. And nobody knows. They say uh, this man said that, or this general, or this. But I think this is also an uncanny and unknown that something, for me, it is the self who was interfering and risking the British that they could evacuate to England. But there, the historians are only looking at it from our conscious mind. And from the conscious mind, they construct a, a rational uh, thing, which is not true. It is irrational. And I think more and more things have happened in this irrational way in history. But uh, as the historians don't know about parapsychology any, uh, so they uh, produce a rational system and say it was like that. But probably one should investigate more into these events in history. And I think one will find a lot I have an additional question that I somehow addressed in my postscript. Jung says that the numinous happen when there is enough energy coming up from the collective unconscious so things are ready for a development, change, which are not always positive. Change is not always positive. Um, I talk about Berlin, 1989, but in 1989 there was also the massacre of Tiananmen where things were went the other way in Berlin the tanks were ready to take the streets nobody gave the order because Krenz was the new secretary Honecker was ousted and Gorbachev didn't want blood in the streets but what about Budapest 1956 with the hero Naji and the uprise of the people. What about Prague, 68, Palash and his death? Why the why change only happens when it happens? And I'm thinking of the Palestinian liberation movement, which puts the theory of David and Goliath upside down or swap it, David became Goliath. What is your opinion about this? Yeah, uh, I can say only, for me, it is the self which is, is arranging it. And <clears throat> the historians should look at it from a psychological perspective, namely, in your case, uh, on uh, Eastern Germany, uh, with the Gorbachev and the whole movement in the people, uh, there was a collective movement, 
going on in this direction of liberation, of opening the borders, which was probably not in the other two. And I had an active imagination uh, one where I asked the self, why do we have war? It is so destructive and awful and uh, so much uh, pain and, and uh, for people. Uh, is it necessary? this evil and then um, the answer was <clears throat> in every war there is a change of mentality there is a, a progress of consciousness it's like a staircase so it goes up and then in peace time it consolidates this level which has been reached of consciousness must be consolidated. It cannot go just on and on and on uh, in the collective. And then another war is making consciousness growing and then it is consolidated again so this would be the meaning of war and I thought this would be a, an idea that we have to accept war is meaningful because for war, war, Krieg. Yeah, war. Because from the conscious mind, we see that for war, people discovered a lot of important things. For instance, uh, uh, for the airplane, this uh, uh, radiation to search the, the, the airplanes. Uh, this is uh, for civil uh, use. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, in civil time, in, in uh, peace time, uh, very important discovery. But it was uh, discovered in war time. As, as, so uh, ma many of uh, discoveries which had a purpose in the war are now, uh, e even in peacetime, important for the people. Radar, uh, I meant, with the radar nowadays. Sky, uh, how are they called? Oh, uh, the police for the sky. The satellites? No, at uh, the airport. I don't know. Uh, who said uh, you can come and land and you can start? No. What, the radio? The, the Sky Guide. Sky Guide. Okay. I mean, they have satellites and, yeah. and uh, see on their screens where the airplanes are. And so, uh, this has been discovered in Second World War. So, there one sees uh, because uh, it was forced to see the. Uh, rockets which were coming, V1 and V2, 
from Germany to London, uh, one had to know in advance to uh, warn the population. But nowadays, it is uh, an important thing for our life. You couldn't go to uh, New York anymore without this. And this brings us back to intuition, precognition, somehow telepathy. Uh -huh. If the reason entity, an institute, able to see that a state is sending a bomb, a missile, to another one, I go back to my premonition of, I could have the intuition of a trip and death coming. But how to cope with this? Can we cope with this? Because of course, you know, you have the anti-missiles military ready to bombard the missiles that are coming. But how do you deal with this information? Recognition of death, recognition of whatever. And dreams help us on this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you should tell, tell President Tr uh, Tr uh, Trump. Trump. Uh, because he is afraid from northern Korean uh, missiles coming now to America, to California, and, and so on. But of course, he cannot go to sleep and uh, ask for a dream to be prevented before they are coming. It's a bit like Gilgamesh, isn't it? Like Gilgamesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the intentions of, of the self are different than our intentions. For instance, you mentioned uh, Tiananmen. This was awful, but I thought perhaps it had some good because more and more I have the impression evil is not only evil, evil sometimes has a good side too. You always see an antidromia there. An, an antidromia. The yeah. opposite that you yeah. talk about. Yeah. That, um, this Tiananmen massacre uh, um, prevented the government to be more strict with the people and that they saw. When they do this um, killing, then Millions of people will know and will uh, uprise and against the government. So they cannot do too much because the population is there and reacts. And this was also in your case with the Eastern German they were on the street, demonstrating. So something was going on in the population to liberate them. And I said, I think the goal of individuation is liberty freedom. We are fenced in by conventions, by laws, by the government, by money, by power, and a lot of these things. And the whole goal of individuation is to get freed from all these restraints which is restraining us and 
you cannot do this and you shouldn't do that and, and so on, that we get free and that at the end men should live what he is created for and not what he is bound and doomed by the corrective to do. In my, my PhD thesis, I call it absolute freedom, as the word freedom is not enough. Because Mandela writes that we were able to free ourselves from the chain, from the prison, but we will never be free if we don't have a contact with the other, I would say even become generative. There is an important sentence from Simone de Beauvoir who says, a free woman is not a légère woman. I would go beyond the sex, beyond the gender, so to say, a free, absolute free human being is somebody who goes deep into himself, herself, connects to herself, to himself. And this brings us back to complex theory, to Jung and the fact that absolute freedom can only be when you can be in contact with you. Try to understand which complex are constellating and make you unfree, imprison you. Yeah. And this is difficult. But uh, there is the question, what does freedom mean? Uh, namely, when Jung went to India before the Second World War, and then, um, I forgot the name of this Indolog friend, which he had, Zimmer, Zimmer uh, told him he must uh, visit this uh, uh, holy man in India. And when he came back, Zimmer asked him, did you meet him? And the young said, no. He didn't want to meet this saint. And why? Zimmer was the, uh, didn't uh, understand it. And so uh, he asked, why didn't you meet the saint? And Jung said, I have to live with what I am and not becoming a saint. So freedom doesn't mean we are all saints at the end. No, we have to know our evil side, our shadow. We have um, opposites in us and we have to deal with that and uh, become uh, a unified person with the opposites. So this is not a one-sided like the saint. This reminds me of Perhaps it's a nice way to close our conversation today. Reminds me of a joke that my first analyst, Professor Alessandro Albizzati, told me many, many years ago. He said, a Freudian and a Jungian meet. The Freudian says to the Jungian, you know, now I know all my evil. I know all the devil in me. The Jungian looks at him and is astonished and say, wow. Congratulations. You know, says the Jungian, I know some of my heaven, but I know also some of my angels. Isn't this what you just said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to unite the two, not be a split personality who is one with its tables and one with its angels, but to be both. Because when you read the book of Baba Hannah about Jung, she says, 
sometimes he hit me over the head. But the difference between Aliyah Aliyafi and Barbara Hanna is that she knew when he hit me over the head, I knew that I'm in my animus. I'm wrong. And therefore he hit me over the head to tell me, Stop it. Give up. Stop it. But Aliyah Aliyafi said, Oh, he's an old man, and, uh, and sometimes he's angry, and sometimes he, he's uh, not uh, gentle. So uh, she didn't understand what it is. And uh, therefore I said, an individuated person, and I think you was in the end, is not the same who is always very nice and, and uh, but he has both sides integrated. They are not autonomous anymore. And this is the freedom which I uh, meant at the end. Thank you, Dr. Ribi. It has been welcome. a pleasure.